from Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. On News Hour tonight, APC Screening Committee disqualifies 10 presidential aspirants. Gas explosion injures 20 racist shops in Kano. Court remands Osinachi's husband in Kujie prison. And on the foreign scene, at least four killed in German rail accident. Hello and welcome to News Hour on Trust TV. I am Diron Onifade. The All Progressives Congress Presidential Aspirants Screening Committee has disqualified 10 of the 23 aspirants contesting to become the party's flag bearer in the 2023 elections. And chairman of the committee, John Oyegu, who is also a former national chairman of the party, said all aspirants met big, basic constitutional qualifications for the position. Ken Diamodu reports. The Independent National Electoral Commission has launched the regulations and guidelines for the conduct of the general elections in the country. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu announced this on Friday during a meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security at the Commission's headquarters in Abuja. According to the INEC chief, the electoral umpire has virtually concluded the planning processes for the 2023 polls, nine months ahead of elections, with the release of the regulations and guidelines and earlier publication of the strategic plan 2022 to 2028 and election project plan 2023. It revealed that the training manual would also be presented to Nigerians in the next couple of weeks while INEC will focus on election administration in the areas of logistics, training, voter education, technology, sensitization against vote buying, inclusivity measures, and security. Supporters have converged on the National Secretariat of the All Progressives Congress to promote their candidates ahead of the APC presidential primaries. In this report, Trust TV's Sergei Ibrahim examines the mood at the APC Secretariat ahead of the party's special convention scheduled to hold on Monday, the 6th of June. The report. To its presidential primaries, supporters have approached its national secretariat to drum support for their candidates. And we know very soon we are going to celebrate with him in 2023. The supporters, mostly persons with disabilities, also thank the party for giving opportunities to persons with disabilities to participate actively in politics. Edmilo is, is the only aspirant that considers a person with disability. He created directory for persons with disability. Recently, he just concluded a uh, uh, House of Assembly election. He gave all, one of us, person with disability, automatic ticket to the House of Assembly. And is the person that start implementing United Nations Convention of Right of Person with Disability in line with the, with, with, with the 20, 20, 20, 20, 25 uh, development goals. Similarly, some supporters of former President Goodluck Jonathan stormed the Secretariat to call on its leadership to adopt him as their consensus candidate. We are calling on President Momo de Buhari to continue to urge all party stakeholders for him to be given the preference of a consensus candidate in the party. We look at all the, the, the uh, aspirants that have, that have bought forms and have been screened under uh, APC. He's the most qualified. He has been president, he has done it before, so there is, no, there, is no, there is no doubt that he cannot do it better. I'm here to say, to speak with one voice on behalf of the women, that we want APC to bring good luck, Jonathan, come 2023. The women are ready to vote for him because we look at him to be a you know, trusted and tested candidate who is credible enough to come and take Nigeria to another level. 
They explained that the former president, who is the most experienced candidate, has learned from past mistakes and will do better once elected as president. Sagi Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. A presidential aspirant on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has said he holds the president, Muhammad Buhari, in high esteem. Reactions are told Mr. Tinubu's comment on, in Abeokuta on Thursday, where he said they, he deserves to lead the nation after helping President Buhari to win the 2015 elections. In a statement on Friday, Tinubu said his comments were not meant to disrespect the president, adding that he had been quoted out of context. He said reactions suggesting he had been disrespectful to the president were sensational and incorrect. Following the postponement of the deadline for conducting primary elections, a group has expressed worry over the independence of Nigeria's electoral umpire and the group while explaining that the decision of the commission to shift the deadline was a result of pressure from political class, alleged that such action confirms that the commission is under external influence. Segir Ibrahim reports. The Resource Center for Human Rights and Civic Education, CRISED, has stated that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, cannot be independent due to the influence of those who determine its chairman. Well, I have never really think that INEC have independence as far as, I, as I'm concerned. For the fact that it was, uh, it was written as part of their name, it was coined in their name, uh, independent National Electoral Committee does not make them independent. So we have seen that uh, in this country it is who pay the papa that dictates the tune. Executive Director of Chrysad, Ibrahim Zikrullah, he made this known while addressing journalists on the sideline of the fifth memorial of its founder, Professor Abubakar Momo, and the commissioning of its new head office in Guarimpa, named after its founder. Zikrullah explained that as the reason why the center wasn't surprised when the commission shifted the deadline for political parties to hold their primary elections. The primaries of uh, PDP and APC. As far as I'm concerned, these parties never really represent the people. And then they, that they have that coin name, party, does not really make them political party. Because when you talk about political party, you talk about an organization that evolved from the people, where people, where there is inclusiveness, where people can speak out, where people can, can actively choose their leaders. He also explained that the Senate speedily amended the Electoral Act for the second time after the realization that their interest wasn't represented. INEC is only to do the biddings of the National Assembly and the Executive. Look at what they did. After sending an amendment B to the president for assay, and the president has rightly assented to it, they suddenly realized that, oh, their benefit, their interest was not well taken care of. So they had an emergency session. Overnight, they have amended the bill, which they are waiting, is waiting for another asset. This is the uh, same assembly that will have bills for the past eight years are there in the assembly which they have not looked at. He however added that until civic knowledge spreads about the dangers of selling one's vote, the nation would find it difficult to move forward. Sagir Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. Son of the former governor of Nasarawa State, late Aliyu Akwedoma, has picked the Nasarawa State governorship ticket of the Zenith Labour Party. Abubakar Abdullahi reports that Umar Aliyu Akwedoma emerged through a voice vote. The report. I will bring you that report if it is ready. The governorship candidate of the Opposition or Progressives Congress in Bochi State for the 2023 general elections, Sadiq Baba Abubakar, says the fight against insecurity in Nigeria should adopt 
a collaborative and multifaceted approach in order to bring it to an end. Abu Bakr has stated this while interacting with journalists on issues bordering on the state and the country as a whole. Adamu Imam completes the report. The governorship candidate commended the federal government for making funds available to procure required equipment in fighting insecurity in the country, stressing that collaboration and engagement are key to achieve success. Very broad statistical perspective. Mm -hmm. The dimensions of security are so many, but generally we tend to focus on the fiscal dimensions of security. You have the economic dimension of security, even the political dimension for people to come and express their interests and to ensure that that interest is reflected in what came, uh, what, what, what turned out to be the result is an issue that could generate insecurity. So that is the political dimension of security. You have the economic dimension, you have the social dimension, schools that I've talked about, you know, hospitals. These are all different dimensions, but generally people tend to uh, focus more on the physical dimension of security which, which, which is not the main thing. So anyway, like I said, it He assured that if elected, his administration will adopt a multifaceted approach in securing lives and properties in order to maintain peace across the state. Broader perspective, if you begin to address the political, economic, and social dimensions of security, especially at the state level, the federal government is doing a lot in terms of equipping that the physical dimension, equipping the armed forces, providing and all that, 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 that you know, is required. To address this, but like I said, it's not the main issue. Uh, all I will emphasize is in our understanding of security, let's try to look at it from a wider perspective. It will help and it will make us understand what needs to be done. Um, Abubakar, who said the focus is now on how to defeat the PDP come 2023, noted that the APC is ready to wrestle power from the ruling party and turn around the fortune of the state. Five All Progressives Congress APC senatorial aspirants have rejected the result of Adamawa South senatorial primaries, which produced Adamu Ismaila as winner. Addressing a press conference in Yola, the aggrieved aspirants distanced themselves from the exercise, accusing the Electoral Committee of allocating votes to their names. The report. They said, due to incontrovertible evidence of vote buying by the agents of one of the aspirants, the committee was forced to postpone the election to address the anomaly. They said most of them were at church on Sunday with no access to their phones, which made it impossible to access messages sent to intimate them that the election was rescheduled, adding that the message came barely two hours to exercises. The aggrieved aspirants are calling for total cancellation of the election results. The electoral committee postponed the exercise and assured all of us that the exercise will continue after the issue of criminality had been resolved. The electoral committee also made clear to everybody that the, at that point it was no longer an allegation but that they had substantiated in view of the promissory notes found on the body of the agent that they had substantiated the allegation. But the Nigerian electoral law is very very clear on this. You don't do this to the full glare of the people and openly compromising the process of the election. And what happened was that the pattern was established that day in favor of a particular aspirant who had the promising notes in his pocket. Already the party has that law against buying of votes. It has been made clear, clearly written that that act is unlawful, is unaccepted, and is not part and parcel of the party. The five aspirants who did not partake in the exercise are Senators Grace Bent, Mohamed Abubakar, Mohayid Mohayidi, Barista Balasanga, Bridget Zidon, and Sani Jada. Reacting to allegations, winner of election Adamu Ismail Anuman denied any vote buying as alleged by aggrieved aspirants, whom he said were ill-prepared for the exercise, insisting that the election was free and fair. You're watching Trust TV News R. Coming up after the break, reactions trail 
Katsina's first flyover. Stay with us. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Trust TV News Hour, a look at our top story. APC Screening Committee has disqualified 10 of the presidential aspirants. Now we'll go back to that story from Nasarawa. The son of the former governor of Nasarawa State, late Aliu Akwedoma, has picked the Nasarawa state governorship ticket of the Zenith Labour Party. Abubakar Abdullah reports that Umaru Aliu Akwedoma emerged through a voice vote. The report. The emergence of late Nasarawa state governor's son as ZLP governorship candidate followed a motion for his affirmation by Musa Ihimoga, member Doma North constituency at the Nasarawa State House of Assembly and seconded by Mr. David Iposhi. I stand here to make the motion for the affirmation of the one and only candidate of our great party, a person of Honorable Umar Aliyu Akwe Doma. Those in favor of this motion say aye. Aye. Say, say aye, Savi. Speaking to newsmen shortly after the Congress, Doma said he felt a sense of duty and responsibility to fly the party's flag once again for the governorship position in Nasarawa State in 2023. The reason why I have decided to aspire once again is because the same reasons that led me to aspire in 2019 still abound. Nasrallah State was created, spearheaded by its founding fathers to be able to pool resources, both human and material, for the development of the people. Doma promised to ensure an agricultural revolution in the state, noting that as an agrarian state, Nasrallah requires a revamped agricultural sector that is technologically driven for more development to thrive. 
the ZLP candidate alleged that successive administrations in the state failed to prioritize the silent resources that should drive the state development. He promised to reintroduce a modified version of Badakoshi agricultural program of his late father, taking into cognizance some of the factors that impeded its successful implementation. The governorship hopeful also said the youth will be given their pride of place in his administration if given the mandate in 2023. The late Aliu Doma, father of ZLP candidate, governed the state between year 2007 to 2011 on the platform on People's Democratic Party. Now to stories outside politics. The district head of Gunduma, a Mutumbiu chiefdom of Taraba State has been abducted. Also abducted are four of his subjects and a housewife. Daily trust gathered that gunmen suspected to be kidnappers stormed Gunduma town in Gaso local government area midnight and abducted the monarch Malam Wali Gunduma in his palace. It was further gathered that the wife and son of prominent politician Alaji Sani Gunduma and two other persons were also abducted. The government said to be about 20 in number, operated for more than an hour and took the monarch and four other persons to an unknown location. Spokesman of Taraba Police Command, Usman Abdullahi, who confirmed the incident, said the police are on the trail of the kidnappers. A gas explosion has injured at least 20 people and raised several shops at Sheka Quarters, Koboto local government area of Kano State. The explosion reportedly went off around 8 p.m. Thursday at a gas cylinder refilling shop. A resident of the area, Malam Idi, said the gas exploded, burning several people and shops. He said the incident affected mostly persons in the gas shop and other business owners in the adjacent shops. Confirming the incident, the spokesman for the Kano State Fire Service, Semino Yusif, puts the figure of victims at 20. The Federal Capital Territory High Court in the Wuse area of Abuja has remanded Peter Wachuku husband of late gospel singer Osinachi in the Kuje Correctional Facility. The presiding judge, Justice Njide Kanwosu Iheme, gave the order on Friday after he pleaded not guilty to 23 charges bordering on domestic violence and homicide, among others. She ordered that the suspect be remanded at the correctional facility while the trial was adjourned to June 16 and June 17. Wachuku will be in prison pending the hearing and determination of the homicide-related suit instituted against him by the Attorney General of the Federation. The gospel singer died on April 8, and many of our colleagues had accused her husband of subjecting the victim to domestic violence, which led to her death. A federal high court in Abuja will, on August 29, deliver judgment in the extradition suit filed by the Attorney General of the Federation against the suspected DCP Abba Kiari over his alleged link with Ramon Abbas, also known as Hush Poppy, an alleged internet fraudster being held in the United States. Justice Inyangeko fixed the date after counsel for the parties in the suit adopted their processes and presented their arguments in the matter. The federal government had sought Kiari's extradition to the U.S. to answer a case over his alleged link with Hush Poppy. The application was filed under the Extradition Act as part of the Nigerian government's approval of the request by the U.S. for Kiari's extradition. Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Bello, has clarified that he is halting the inauguration of the new chairman of area councils in the territory was to keep with the rule of law. The minister spoke to newsmen at State House Abuja on Thursday. He said the administration was awaiting the outcome of cases in the court aimed at vacating the judgment or 
are the worst appealing the judgment. Karen Diamodio reports. The decision of the FCT administration to suspend the inauguration of new council chairman a day to the event had fueled speculations that the FCT minister was an interested the party in the process the because the election was won by the main opposition party. But the minister has dismissed those speculations. As a law-abiding uh, uh, government, we, 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 we honor the, the court judgment. And that's a natural thing to do. I'm sure it would have been unthinkable for me as city minister in the federal government of Nigeria in 2022 to flout a court judgment. It doesn't make sense. So now what we are doing is we are awaiting the outcome of the cases in the court. And at the end of the day, as a law-abiding administration, whatever the court says, we move on. The minister is also quick to dismiss suggestions that terrorists are building cells within the FCT, insisting that the capital territory is the most secure part of Nigeria today. Every incident that you read in the papers, or you see on the social media, or you listen in the radio, I tell you 10 to 15 cases have been nipped in the board, but it's not out there in the public. For instance, we have, through the security agencies, busted several cells of BH, Boko Haram, within the FCT. Certain areas where they were, and the kind of businesses they are doing, and how they were able to blend easily within the wider community is something that I cannot divulge here. The minister also explained the new spate of demolitions that he had signed off on in recent times. Demolitions, he says, will continue because there are people who do not want to follow regulations, while some demolitions are just almost inevitable. We need to save lives, and that's why we continue to demolish. And when you have to construct a road meant for hundreds of thousands, and somebody decides, without seeking appropriate approval, decides to go and build on the middle of the road, so are you going to make a detour to, in respect of one person to the detriment of hundreds of thousands or are you going to just move it away? Other issues that are being tackled by the FCT administration are the large numbers of uncompleted buildings and unoccupied estates in the FCT. From State House Abuja, Kende Amodu, Trust TV News. Katsina State Governor Aminu Bello Masari on Tuesday flagged off the first flyover interchange road network in Katsina State, estimated to have cost 4.3 billion naira. At the flag off event, Masari declared that Katsina has now joined the League of States with embedded flyovers in their capitals. Jamil Mumbai has more details. The flag off is part of the government's plan to improve urban infrastructure in Katsina State. Come out of that. The governor, Aminu Masari, said the contractor has been paid 50% of the cost of project, adding that it would be delivered within 12 months. He explained that the project, the third of its kind in the state, would reduce traffic congestion in the government reserved area of Katsina Metropoli. I believe that whichever government comes in must concentrate on the development of our inner cities to reduce this heavy congestion. What we are witnessing today is part of a moderate effort in terms of actualizing what we have promised to the people of Katana State. Months ago, the state government embarked on two other interchange flyovers and underpass in Kofar Kwaya and Kofar Kaura, with few months to general elections and by implication, the end of the present administration. There are concerns in some quarters over the completion of these projects. While many celebrate the coming of these flyovers, small businesses, shops, and residents are negatively impacted as they are forced to relocate to other places. <laughs> Ma'aruf Bindawa and his father have been carrying business for over 20 years. Even though they are happy, they have no option 
but to leave. Gaskiya mu dai bamu samu jin dadi ba amma da yake abu ne wanda gwamnati za ta yi. To be frank, we are not happy. But since it's a government project, as the masses, we have no option. We have to obey the government. Most of us run our businesses on credit. We don't even know where to go. Behind me is another four billion project of uh, construction of flyover and underpass by the Katsina state government. If you could recall a few months ago, the state government has embarked on the construction of uh, two flyovers in Kofakaura and Kofarkwaya areas. And uh, this is the third phase of flyovers we're seeing in Katsina. And according to contractors, the, the duration of the project, it's going to be 12 months. The demolition process has started. And the, a lot of people are concerned, majorly when it comes to traffic, because this area is one of the centers that links the major roads in Katsina State. And if you can look around, you can see major majority of businesses are going to be affected by this project. But as far as the government is concerned, this is another achievement, another success. One thing is clear, urban infrastructure will lead to better interstate transport system, but it comes with economic consequences. One of which, small business owners like Ma'aruf and the hundreds of businesses will be affected. Jamil Mabai, Trust TV News, Kazana. You're watching News R on Trust TV. We'll be back after the break. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board by being civil, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency.
Welcome back. The Lagos State Government says about 5,000 motorcycles have been crushed in the first quarter of 2022. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Benga Motosho, who made this known at the crushing site in Alausa, said the crushing of 2,000 bikes on Friday is an indication of how serious the government is in its enforcement. According to him, the government had to take the enforcement seriously due to the alarming rate of road accidents, noting that this year alone about 1,712 have been recorded. Of this number, he said 767 were due to Okada accidents, adding that 49% of people who died are young adults between the ages of 30 and 39. Our correspondent reports that 21 violators who were arrested have been taken to court. The Katsina state government is focused on reducing poverty, especially among people with special needs, women and children, as well as other vulnerable groups. This is why it has met with heads of social protection policy implementation agencies, MDAs and partners. Abdullah Yamadi reports. The aim of this gathering is to come up with well-coordinated strategies through which poverty will be reduced to the barest minimum among the over 9 million people of Kazuma State. It means the coordination and implementation of social protection policy programs must be reviewed to ensure that they have optimally achieved the objective for which they were initiated. UNICEF Field Officer Ramatu Aliu is confident that the collaboration between the UN body and the Kazan state government is being felt by the citizens of the state. We have an implementation framework, we have a meal plan, but it has not been approved by the state government. But as MDAs and technical supporters, UNICEF, we're still hoping and working with the state to make sure that we don't lose the momentum of getting this policy approved by the state. The key to success is the resilience of participants, which is essential to the poverty reduction policy. It's basically reviewing we reviewed the terms of reference for the technical working group we looked at the previous terms of reference for the twg that were given during the development of the social protection policy and now that the social protection policy is already in place so we reviewed the terms of references to suit the implementation of the policy as well if the social protection policy document is approved by the Kazan State Executive Council, it will serve as a roadmap towards actualizing the poverty reduction program. We discuss how to organize all social protection activities. It just to come in a single umbrella. We want to coordinate the activities of social protection instead of going on plan. But now we try to address the activities so that it will be 100% uh, coordinated. Experts say a significant number of people in Kazan State, especially those with special needs, women and children, live below the poverty line. So um, the state uh, has made tremendous effort to see how they can reduce this issue through the provision of social protection programs across the state. And uh, what we're trying to do now is to bring all key social protection programs um, partners together as stakeholders to begin to review how they're doing and progressing and what needs to be done in order for them to function at maximum capacity. Recommendations sent to Governor Amini Bella Masari include the removal of the economic barrier preventing the poor and vulnerable from education and health. They also include the inclusion of people with special needs in governance, social and economic sectors to help bridge the existing gap between the rich and the poor in Kazan State.
Abdullahi Ismayamadi Trust Television News Katsina The Center for Information Technology and Development has confirmed an outbreak of monkeypox in eight Nigerian states, including the FCT. Coordinator for COVID-19 Vaccine Project, Hamza Ibrahim, said a 40-year-old patient who has an underlying medical condition has been killed by the virus. Meanwhile, the center also confirmed that there is a significant progress in reporting gender-based violence across Kano State during the month of May 2022. It's Adamawa with five cases, Lagos four, Bielsa two, Delta two, Cross River two, FCT two, Kano State two, Imo State two, and Rivers one. According to NCDC, of the 21 cases, death was reported in a 40-year-old patient who had underlying comorbidity and was on immunosuppressive medications. The detection of the virus ought to be an alarm for particularly the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, and we want to, at this point, strongly call on the center, that is the NCDC, to deploy active observatory mechanism across the Federation with a view to contain the further spread of the virus. The rise of data collected for the month of May on the occurrence of gender-based violence in Kano State. In comparison with the data obtained in previous months, GBB cases are still on the increase. 85 cases were reported via our GBB application for the month, which includes sexual harassment, online harassment, sexual abuse, and white battering. From the data obtained, we can deduce that our monitors and the general public are beginning to acknowledge the importance of reporting gender-based violence, which is an encouraging news as this will assist us in our advocacies. Kaduna State Government, in partnership with Zipline, has launched drones for instant delivery of blood, vaccines, and other medical supplies to health facilities across the state. This, the government said, is part of effort towards the actualization of Universal Health Transformation Project. And here's the report. Kaduna State is the first state that launched the use of drones for instant delivery of medicines, blood and vaccines to hospitals mostly located at the rural communities. The center also houses a warehouse and inventory management. The fixed-wing drones are designed to move deliveries to long distances, adding that it will only take 45 minutes to deliver medical products to a distance of 85 kilometers. In his address, Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai says the center championing the delivery will complement the effort of the state government in ensuring that access to health care service is simplified. Governor El Rufai added that zipline instant delivery drones will eliminate the transportation challenge of moving medical supplies to hard to reach areas. This partnership with zipline enhances our ability to distribute medical commodities more efficiently to our health facilities throughout the 46,000 square kilometers of this state, including the remotest and otherwise inaccessible rural clinics, health centers, and hospitals. Indeed, even private hospitals, pharmacies, and patent medicine stores can benefit from our bulk purchase of commodities direct from manufacturers and the timely and efficient delivery by zipline. Earlier, the general manager of Zipline Nigeria, Catherine Odias, says the center has the capacity to deliver to over 500 health facilities in the state. Today's event will start of our final steps in going commercial, and by that, begin delivery of medical commodities to over 500 health facilities within this distribution center. Once this Thank you. Once this first center is fully up and running, we will commence work on two additional centers in Kaduna State with the government, of course.
While Rwanda and Ghana are the leading countries in the use of drones delivery, Kaduna State is the first state in Nigeria to launch the service. We'll be back after the break. Daily, we bring you updates around politics. People like you who are very young, you have no future. Anybody now who is 30 years, if what is happening to the continues, by the time you are 60, you will have no country. The DPO of a particular unit does not have to wait until the commissioner tells him what to do within his jurisdiction. We have political parties on the ground. Some of them have been there for years. Mm. But they themselves, in their own sober moments, they know that this country is not the one they are expecting to run. Policy and governance. Are you saying the NBS what? is lying? I'm saying to you very clearly mm. that the NBS has a serious problem with mm. accurate data till today. The fifth assembly, as well as the seventh assembly, uh, their own attempt were unproductive. Emergence of the Taliban has simply emboldened terror groups globally. There is a lot of attention with regards to security developments in Nigeria. On daily politics, we interrogate issues, holding the actors to account, bearing in mind all the sides. We heard that in some places now, people have to go and pay tax, not to the local government, not to the state, but to criminals. Nobody can come to your house and kidnap you without information. If this country is bleeding, it is bleeding because we have failed to educate our young. Still watching Trust News Hour. Let's now join Chair Makan Wafo for business news. Nigeria has recorded surplus in transactions made with foreign countries in the first quarter of 2022, reckoning 1.1 trillion naira surplus from the 13 trillion naira transactions conducted during the period. This was disclosed in a report released by the National Bureau of Statistics. The report, which stated that Nigeria's export in the first quarter was valued at 13 trillion naira, saw export going up to 7.1 trillion naira, while total import was valued at 5.9 trillion naira. The report noted that the spike in export revenue was due to increase in crude oil export, bringing in 5.6 trillion naira, accounting for 79.16 percent of total exports. Non crude oil exports value stood at 1.4 trillion naira, which is 20.84% of total exports, of which non oil products contributed 715.19 billion naira, representing 10.07% of total exports. The export figure was a sharp rise in 24 months after the country's export fell below 2 trillion naira in the second quarter of 2022. The Central Bank of Nigeria has ordered banks and payment service providers to accept indemnity from customers for highly secured online funds transfers. It stated this in a secular signed by the Director, Payment System Management Department, Musa Jimo. The CBN also released another guideline titled Guidelines for the Registration and Operation of Bank Neutral Cash Hubs in Nigeria. The guideline stated that BNCH's Cash collection centers are to be established by registered processing companies or deposit money banks based on business needs. The CBN said the hubs would be located in areas with high volumes of commercial activities and cash transactions. And finally, in the stock market, the market closed the last trading day of the week on a positive note as the all share index appreciated by 0.18% bouncing back from the last three sessions of losses to close at 52,908.24 points. The market capitalization grew by 0.17% to close at 
28.523 trillion naira, gaining 49 billion naira. The market break closed positive as 22 equities emerged as gainers against 16 that declined in their share prices. An aggregate of 283 million units of shares were traded in 4,245 deals valued at 3.4 billion naira. And that's it for Business News. We'll be back shortly. Dear residents of our beautiful capital city of Abuja, I know we all desire to have a world-class city with working infrastructure and clean streets. That is why the Federal Capital Territory Administration is investing a lot of resources and manpower to ensure prompt evacuation of refuse from all nooks and crannies of the city. Now, this can only be sustained if all residents play their part by promptly paying their waste collection bills. Encourage everyone around you to be patriotic and pay their bills. The task of keeping Abuja clean is for all of us. Remember, soup waste sweet. Namone kila. This message is from the Federal Capital Territory Administration. Back to the news. President Muhammad Buhari on Friday returned to Abuja after a three-day state visit to Spain. The president on arrival observed Jumat prayers at the State House Mosque. He later met chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum, PGF, and uh, governor of Kebi State, Atiku Bagudu, uh, as well as his counterpart from uh, Nasarawa State, Abdullah Sule. The meeting held ahead of the convention of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, where the party's presidential candidate for next year's poll will be elected. The convention has been scheduled to hold between Monday 6th and Wednesday 8th June at the Eagle Square in Abuja. And now on the foreign scene, a regional train has derailed in southern Germany, killing at least four people, according to police and local officials. A police spokesperson said on Friday the Munich-bound train had been quite full at the time of the crash in Borogin, north of a ski resort in Bavaria that is also popular with hikers. Police said at least four people were killed with about 30 seriously injured and taken to hospitals. There were multiple school children on board the train while rescue services were reported at the site of a derailed train near Borgen, southern Germany. Three carriages overturned at least partly and people were pulled out of the windows to safety. Kagikistan Health Minister, who recommended a poisonous route as a treatment for coronavirus, has been jailed following a corruption probe linked to the purchase of COVID vaccines, prosecutors said on Friday. al makda Bashen Aliyev has been nicknamed Aconite for promoting a, a homemade liquid solution based on the poisonous route also known as wolf's bane, to cure coronavirus and other diseases. Prosecutors said Bashen Aliyev was involved in the purchase of more than 2 million coronavirus vaccine doses over national requirements, proceeds from which were transferred to offshore accounts. The money spirited away totaled $19 million, a statement said. Bashen Aliyev has been under pressure with his deputies in May, calling for his sacking and accusing him of bullying ministry employees, including using sexual taunts. Let's now join Adeni Ajishafe for Sports News. World Basketball Ruling Body FIBA has called up Mali as Nigerian replacement for the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022. This follows Nigerian Basketball Federation's inability to confirm its participation in the competition and the decision of President Muhammadu Buhari to withdraw Nigerian Basketball Federation MBBA from all international basketball competitions and activities for a period of two years. FIBA says, given the multiple street deadlines that cannot be postponed, 
in order to ensure a successful staging of a major international event and also protect the integrity of the competition. The FIBA Executive Committee decided Nigerian withdrawal from FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022 is confirmed. Mali, as the next ranked team from Group B of FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022 qualifying tournament in Belgrade, has been invited to participate in FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022. FIBA will announce whether there will be any other decision related to the MBBA participation in other FIBA competitions and any potential disciplinary measures in due course. Meanwhile, FIBA Africa officials have visited Mali to convey the message of the world body. And still on basketball, Boston Celtic defeated Golden State Warriors 120-108 to take 1-0 series lead in Game 1 of the 2022 NBA Playoffs Finals. Celtic won two of four quarters at the Chase Center, San Francisco. Golden State Warriors Stephen Curry led all scorers in the game with 34 points, 5 rebounds and 5 assists. Boston Celtics Al Horford scored 26 points, 6 rebounds and 3 points mark. Horford's 26 points are tied for the second most points scored by a Boston Celtic player in their finals debut. Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics after the game completed a new NBA record for most assists in a finals debut. Boston Celtic and Golden State Warriors with a combined 43 points mark set a new NBA Finals record for most combined three points mark. Celtic had 21 three points, while Golden State Warriors scored 19 three points mark. Boston Celtic coach Emil Doka has won his first game in an NBA Finals with a fourth quarter comeback to take a 1 0 series lead. Game two of the Finals will take place on Sunday at Chase Center, San Francisco. That's sport news. I am Adini Ajishafe. And with that, we've come to the end of News R on Trust TV. For more news, connect with us across all our social media platforms. I am Diron Onifade. Have a wonderful weekend. Good night.